Hankinson's Cody Malk is one of the top offensive linemen remaining on the NFL draft board. And experts say he could go as early as tonight in the second or third round. In fact, ESPN lists Malk as the second best available offensive tackle. Reporter Jack Wallace is in Hankinson tonight at Cody's draft party. Well, thanks, y'all, and welcome to the 2023 NFL Draft Party in Hankinson, North Dakota, getting ready to celebrate Cody Mauk's entry into the league, potentially tonight in the second or the third round. Now, behind me, you see the green and gold balloons of Tud, lots of family coming in here so far, and we're going to have a whole big family, the whole town of Hankinson, likely to arrive here in the next coming hours. Could be up to 900 people here in the community center. Cody trying to become the fifth year in a row of Bison gets drafted, and the third year in a row, one goes directly into the second round, which will start up at 6 o'clock tonight. We're going to have live coverage coming up around 6.25-ish, so tune into that. And then we're going to have more sound and plenty more coming up at 10 o'clock to round out the night. In Hankinson with the Bison, Jack Wallace, Valley News Live Sports. The Deluxe Burlington Athletic Department really stepped up this weekend to organize makeup games for our region softball games that have been postponed due to the weather, as you could guess. <laughs> They're all at the Soft Hill Complex today and tomorrow. First game of the day pits Botno against Ray. In the bottom of the first, with a runner on second base, Jay's freshman Autumn Bloms. Pop fly into shallow left field scores Haley Demers. Ray takes a one run lead into the end of the first inning. First pitch of the second inning to Emma Ribchinski, and she hits it into a tough place to get to. Down the first baseline, and she touches all four bases. And inside the park, home run ties the game. Stars broke the game open in the third with two outs. Hallie Gullett, a liner into left field, will score Ribchinski. Emma had quite the day. Three hits on four attempts at the plate. The Stars are playing Glenburn right now. Jays play back-to-back -back games, and the second one is a tough one. Undefeated DLB LC. Sierra Yale pitching for the Lakers. Ball hit to Zanna Berkeley at third. Runner out at first. Kalen Bachmeyer throws to Logan Eastas covering third place. That's a rare first and third double play. Just how good this Lakers team is this year. Bottom of the third. Fly ball hit to Shelby Knox for a routine grab in right field. Piper Feller from DLB able to score, gives the Lakers a 7-none lead. Maddox Falk pitching for Ray. This is a liner to short. Brindley Kancade stops the run with a scoop out of the air. Nice grab, Brindley. Jay is cooking with some momentum now. Gretchen Hickel came a little too close for comfort as I jumped out of the way. This one brings home Autumn Bloms. Ray cut the lead to six, but Berkeley came back up to the plate with Shaylee Holen on second base. Berkeley doubles and trades places with Holen. Lakers, one of two undefeated teams left in the region. Renville is the other, and they play tomorrow. On the other side of the construction site, Rugby and Stanley. In the top of the first, Jamelin Gustafson drills one down the first baseline for Stanley. Kaylee Rice comes home from second base. The Blue Jays put a whole bunch of runs in the first. Runners on second and third now hit to Joran Junt at short. Throw to Joey Wolf at first, gets the batter out, but Gustafson beats out the throw at home to build the lead. Two outs. Here's a highlight that would look pretty cool in 3D if you ask me. Joey Wolf tracks a flower ball. I head for the hills. Joey comes up with the grab. Blue Jays take home their second win of the season in five innings. Minot High softball playing at the Dickinson Jamboree Class A and B schools. Majets took care of Century and Central Cass. They'll play Class B Beulah and then WDA rival Jamestown tomorrow morning. Tonight, the Toros have a must-win game against the Austin Bruins. Here in Minot, the Bruins lead the best of, si best of five series two games to none. Now, if the Toros win, they'll get another chance tomorrow night, but they need to win tonight first. Puck drop in just over an hour at the Mesa. I'm told they're expecting a full barn tonight. Oh, Pepsi's going to be rocking. That's, that's when you get that great energy. Yeah. Home rink advantage. We'll be right back.